So now I'm gonna ask you to, a few questions. And Very good. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Um, maybe uh, you can say how do you got involved in 9/11? Well, this happened uh, about four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and the background is that my wife has been a peace activist for many years, mm -hmm. and we believe that this is the reason why. She had sent to her three DVDs anonymously. We didn't know where they came from. Mm -hmm. And they were lying around for some time. But at some time I put it on to see what it was. And it turned out to be a presentation given by an American professor called Stephen E. Jones. Mm -hmm. And this is for the first time I saw Building 7 going down, World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. And for two reasons... I got upset, interested. One is that I was told that this was World Trade Center, which I, I didn't know that there was, you know, there were two airliners, yes. but there were three skyscrapers. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And I was shocked that nobody had told me about that. And mm -hmm. the other thing is the way Building 7 came down, because I couldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And if you're a scientist and there's something you do not understand, you have a problem. So I had a problem. Okay. And after a couple of weeks, I understood that this was very important. And uh, why is the third tower building number seven so important? It is important because it is so obvious. It is important because everyone can see that this building was come, was taken down in what we call a controlled demolition. For once, everyone can count to three. There were two airliners, there were three skyscrapers. And the other thing is that it has never happened that a building like that should have come down due to fire. And in science, you cannot postulate, suggest something which has never happened because science is based on experience and there is no experience there is no history of, of skyscrapers collapsing so world trade center 7 is a completely clean cut there's no way the official explanation can be correct okay um what's about the free fall speed Excuse me? The free fall speed. The free fall speed is important uh, because to those who understand what it means, it is completely indicative of controlled demolition. It means that the whole structure, the whole supporting structure, at the moment when the building starts collapsing, then the whole structure is gone. Mm -hmm. Nothing is supporting the building. And also, it... It also means that the, I, what I imagine, and most people imagine, is what you do is you take out such buildings, there are much more structure supporting the building than is necessary. Mm -hmm. So when you demolish the building, you take out most of the structure mm -hmm. until it's just standing. And in the very last moment, you have to fire a whole series of explosives very accurately very precisely within milliseconds to see a free fall mm -hmm. so the free fall is an, again another complete total unambitious proof that the building was demolished but free fall may be difficult for many people to understand if they say oh mathematics physics I, I just don't understand anything mm -hmm. So it is for those who has had a little bit of physics mm. to understand it, what free fall means. Okay, um, do you know where does the molten metal come from? The molten metal comes from a thermite reaction. And it, and, and it is a little, what you say, misleading mm -hmm. that many people are talking about the molten steel. Mm -hmm. Because it's true, if you want to melt the steel structure, you must, if you want to destroy the steel structure by thermite, you have to melt the steel at some points. 
but in the thermite reaction you produce molten iron which melts the steel mm -hmm. so if you take whatever you find afterwards of the molten iron in the rubble mm -hmm. maybe 99% comes from the thermite and 1% comes from the steel but the the greatest part of the molten iron observed can only be explained with a thermite reaction having been involved in the demolition and continues continues to react in the rubble they have they have rigged the building which with much more than was necessary it was overkill okay. something very strange went on in the days in the days after the demolition um I think we all know the answer, but is it unusual that steel framed buildings collapse? Unusual? This never, it never happens. And it doesn't collapse to eat due to earthquake either. Steel framed buildings just don't collapse. Okay. Um, where does the dust samples come from? Oh, the one that we used? Yeah. Uh, they were collected by private individuals. Mm -hmm. who passed on the dust samples to, to us in a very certified way. Actually, for doing the work, uh, the scientific work, we had five dust samples. But in each case, we asked the providers of the dust to submit a written form, a written declaration on where they found the dust, how they collected it, how they stored it. Mm -hmm. In some cases it, it, this has even been videoed. Okay. So what is you this is what you what you in English call the chain of custody that you prove that the samples are original. Now the f the fifth of these samples, this person did not want to go public. Mm -hmm. Did not want it, his name mm -hmm. uh, in the public domain. So we pulled out all the data from that sample. Okay. Good. Um, you and several other scientists have found an unusual substance in the dust. What is it? Yeah, but this is this is a, a, um, a type of thermite called nanothermite. So maybe I first should explain to what a, you what thermite is, because this is an old invention. Mm -hmm. It goes back more than 100 years, and it was invented here in Germany. And it is just a mixture of iron oxide and aluminum mm -hmm. <coughs> powder. With, when it reacts, it produces molten iron at very high temperature. It can be used for welding, and it can also be used for destroying other things. Okay. Now, what we found is it's the same chemical reaction, but the material has been produced by nanotechnology. Mm -hmm. And in nanotechnology, everything is smaller. That's one thing. Another thing is that you build the material from the molecular level, atomic level, and upwards. You just no, you don't take just two big things and make them smaller and mix them. Mm -hmm. You build the material from the bottom up. Okay. And it has two consequences. One thing is that the particles involved are much smaller than in classical thermite means that the reaction is much more rigorous. The other thing is that due to the procedure for making the material you also have the option to put in other chemicals mm -hmm. which means that you you have the possibility I'm not saying it's happening I say you have the possibility to use the chemical energy conver converting the material into an explosive that is you're adding other chemicals Mm -hmm. which produces a gas very fast and this is what an explosive is you have a chemical reaction where a gas is produced very fast bang so so we know that modern explosives are based on nanotechnology and this kind of processes and they call them smaller cheaper and nastier than the old time explosives and who is able to kind of um, make these uh, nano uh, yeah. yes produce this, these this uh, is uh, this is mil only military laboratories can do that oh. it's all yeah and we don't we don't know very much about it mm -hmm. but but 
So what we know is from governmental reports and uh, and uh, what you call conference proceedings, when somebody stays in the conference and tells about their results, and these scientists, they also they have to say something in the public yes. domain. But the most of it is, he, is secret. I can say that we understand the chemistry mm -hmm. and we can make something which behaves the same way. We cannot make exactly mm -hmm. the red bread chips. We cannot make, and there are still many things we don't understand. We don't have to. Um, <clears throat> the components from the thermite are extraordinary. Can't they come from the planes or from the buildings? No. There's no way. This is a question I hear quite often. That, of course, there's aluminum in the planes, mm -hmm. and actually the towers were, were covered with aluminum. And also you have rust. Whenever you have iron, you have rust. Yes. This is the two ingredients you need. But people who think that, that the thermite comes from that are violating a very fundamental thing in chemistry. Let me give you an example. Because, if, because when you have tomatoes and you have meat, you don't have a stew. You understand? Yes, yeah. Okay. So because you have the components here and there means that you do not have the material. Yes. And I can also ta take a, a story about matches, Streichholz, mm -hmm. because a match is made of a wood, mm -hmm. and there's a tip where there is a little sulfur, there's a little pulverized glass, and there's a binder, and on the side of the box you have phosphorus. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you have a campfire, and into the fire in the evening, you into the campfire, you throw a little, small pieces of wood, you throw some sulfur, you throw some pulverized glass, mm -hmm. you throw some binder, you throw some phosphorus. Okay. Now, would you expect in the ashes the next morning to find a box of matches? No. No. Surely not. That's what you need. Okay. Um, can you... Ah. Can you tell me something about the nanoscale? Yeah, the nanoscale is, is what, what you call is a, a, from one nanometer is one thousandth of a millimeter. Mm -hmm. No, one millionth of a millimeter. It's one thousandth of one thousandth of a millimeter. And what we call the nano the nanometer, the nano domain, is say from one nanometer to hundred nanometers. Mm -hmm. And on this scale of dimensions, it turns, it, it happens that there are different laws, there are different rules for the physical and chemical phenomena happening. Because this is, these are not molecules, mm -hmm. the small particles, and they are not what we call bulk material. So if you if, say, if you have a gram of gold, it has certain properties. But if you have a small particle where there may be 200, 500 atoms mm -hmm. of gold. This particle has completely different properties, different mm -hmm. from the gold atom and different from the gold material mm -hmm. I have here, okay? So, so nanotechnology, and if, you may, if I may take it a little bit further, the point in nanotechnology is the boundary, is where, is where the material where you go from one material to another. And if you have a very small particle, all the, if we're talking about metal particles, all the metal atoms have as a nearest neighbor nothing, because this is where the particle ends. But if you're a bulk <coughs> material, all the atoms in the bulk material has another gold atom as nearest neighbor. And this is basically what makes the difference, basically. Mm -hmm. But you have to study nanotechnology to really appreciate what I'm saying. I think so. Good. Uh, one last question. If the building cannot come down in the way we are told, do you as a scientist think a new and independent independent investigation is necessary? Or just an, in, uh, just, uh, uh, an investigation? It hasn't been performed yet. It hasn't happened. Uh, and I'm talking about a criminal investigation mm -hmm. because we can all agree probably that there was a crime yes. okay there were 3,000 people killed yes but it has never been investigated as a crime 
or at least we haven't heard about it. Because if, when the police is investigating a crime, usually they come out with some evidence. They mm. come out with some yeah, proof. You, you call it forensic evidence. And usually they charge somebody. They and they write uh, a, ma a manuscript for charging somebody. In the United States, you put down what you call a grand jury to to evaluate the evidence. This hasn't happened, and nobody is wanted for the attack on on World Trade Center. Osama bin Laden is not wanted by FBI for this attack. And somebody called the FBI at some time. It was a journalist. His name was um, uh, Haas. Uh, what was his first name? Ed Haas was his name. And and uh, he called the FBI and I said, why don't you want Osama bin Laden for 9-11? And the FBI, his, his name was Rex Tom, the spokesperson for FBI said, but this is because we do not have any hard evidence connecting Osama bin Laden with 9-11. And this is what we want, a just a criminal investigation of a crime. And I am opposed to crime. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. And good luck with your project. Thank you.